1978 um, AP Physics B exam. A 0.5 kilogram object rotates freely in a vertical circle at the end of a string of length 2 meters as shown above. As the object passes through the point P on the top, at the top of the circular path, the tension in the string is 20 newtons. Assume g is 10 meters per second squared. On the following diagram of the object, draw and clearly label all significant forces on the object when it is at point P. So they give you the diagram and you have to draw all the forces acting on it because I don't have space on this page. I'm just going to draw um, the object right here on P and all the forces acting on the object. So I know there is tension and they give you what that tension is equal to. And there is also mg. And they are not necessarily um, equal to each other. So I don't think I have to make them equal to each other. There is also acceleration there, but it's not a force. And remember, when they ask you to do free body diagram, they only ask you to put the forces, but nothing else. No components, vertical, horizontal, only the forces acting on the object. And there are two of forces acting on the object for A. So that was your answer for A. So I um, wrote everything that was given. So I have more space on this page. So the mass is 0.5 kilogram. The tension was... Um, 20 newtons all the way at the point p on the top and the length of the string is two meters so for um for v part they ask you to calculate the speed of the object at the point p um, because it is a circular motion there is centripetal acceleration and the net force is equal to m a c your net force is your centripetal force. So in this case, your net force is negative T. Uh, another force that you have is negative mg. And the mac um, is negative in this case. And I don't have to say ac over here because otherwise I would have to write negative there. So if I multiply every single term, so there's one term, there's another term, and there's three terms. If I multiply every single term by negative one, it's the same as changing the sign. So I'm just going to change the sign, change the sign, change the sign. And I need to calculate the speed at point P. So M A C, and A C is equal to V squared over R centripetal acceleration. And in your case, R is the length of the string. And um, so your velocity is equal to T plus mg times L divided by M and the square root of this whole thing. So we have the square root of T is 20 mg is 5, the string is 2, and m is 0.5, which is 1 half. So the velocity is equal to the square root. Um, this one has 25, and divide by 1 half is the same times by 2, so I can just write 4 instead of 2. So it looks like it's 5 times 2, which is 10 meters per second. So the velocity at point P, the velocity at point P is 10 meters per second. Okay, for C part, calculate the in increase in kinetic energy of the object as it moves from point P to point Q. So at point P, kinetic energy of the object at P is equal to 1 half m v at p squared so i have one half the mass is 0.5 so that is also one half and v at p is 10 squared so 
So it's quarter of, of 100, that is 25 um, joules. That's the energy. But it also has potential energy at P. If I assume that potential energy at Q is equal to zero joules, then potential energy at P is two times L higher that gives you m g and the height at which p is is two times the strain so m g is five times two and l is two so that gives me uh, 20 right 20 joules so because potential energy at q is equal to zero change of the potential energy is equal to final minus initial negative 20 joules and because potential energy is lost 20 joules that means it went to the kinetic energy so the change of the kinetic energy from p to q increased by 20 joules so the kinetic energy at um, they ask you to calculate the increase of kinetic energy so increase in the kinetic energy so change of the kinetic energy is equal to 20 joules so the object gained 20 joules but the total kinetic energy at q is equal to 45 joules it's the initial plus the one that it gained but they ask you only by how much it increased so it increased only by 20 joules for um, D they ask you calculate the tension on the string at point Q so let's write the forces again at point Q the forces at the, at the object at the bottom would be mg still there the tension would be up and these are the only forces but i also have centripetal acceleration in this case so coming back to my brown color so for c part i have um f net is equal to m a and in this case it's centripetal acceleration uh, the net force is positive tension minus mg so this is the combination that makes it um, to be a centripetal force is equal to m a c in this case acceleration is positive and tension is positive so the tension is equal to m g plus m a c i need to know velocity first so i do not know velocity because that's going to be a tension is equal to m g plus m v at q um, over the radius and the radius is l so i need to plug in into my equation after i know what my velocity is equal to so i'm going to go to a different color to calculate that velocity at q so the kinetic energy at the bottom is equal to one half the mass and the velocity at q squared and equals to 45 joules so that means um one half the mass is one half as well so that's one quarter and v at q squared is equal to 45 so v at q is equal to the square root of um 45 times Four will give me 180 so the velocity at Q is equal to 1342 meters per second now if I plug it in into my equation and it is v squared, let me take, 
centripetal acceleration from here. So this is centripetal acceleration. This is v squared. Well, v squared is actually 180, so it would be easier to plug in. So if I plug in my numbers, let me see if I can fit it here. mg is 5 plus the mass, 1 half. Um, L is also 1 half, or L is 2, so it's another 2 on the bottom. And v squared is 180. So it looks like 45 plus 5 gives us 50 newtons. So the force, tension force at the bottom of the point Q is 15 minutes.